Hey guys and welcome to the channel, I'm Aero Veloce and today we're going to be going over some benchmarks with the 5800X 3D versus the 7950X and some sim racing titles. The system I'm running for the 5800X 3D is running an Asus X570 Hero Dark motherboard with 32GB of 3600MHz CL16 DDR4 RAM. And the 7950X is running an Asus X670E ProArt motherboard with 6,000 megahertz, uh, also 32 gigabytes, um, CL36 uh, DDR5 RAM. Now the benchmarks that I used were the same ones I did in my 3090 versus 4090 video. I could have done some more CPU intensive stuff, but I kind of like benchmarks that are more real world use cases that I use uh, with my setup. Um, so putting it at 1080p and seeing it render 500 FPS versus 525 FPS between the CPUs doesn't have a real world use case for me and I don't think really anybody. Uh, so most of the benchmarks will be for VR, um, triple 4K, which you think would be completely GPU bound, but actually there is a difference at triple 4K between the two CPUs because the 4090 is so powerful. Um, I did do 1440p for to the set of course of titles, so you will still see the extreme amount of frames that those can produce, and there will also show uh, some of the issues that we might be having with Windows 11 as well. Hey, it's me from the future here, and one thing that I just wanted to clarify was that in 1440p triple tests with a 4090 in either of these CPUs, basically what I was trying to point out was either of these CPUs is going to hit well above your monitor refresh rate, so you'd be totally fine picking any of them for 1440p triples. And the other thing I forgot to add is I'm using the Valve Index VR headset for my test running at 144 Hz. But everything will make more sense when we get into the benchmark, so let's just get into that right now. So here we have a set of Corsa at triple 1440p max settings, and the 7950X does have a pretty good lead over the 5800X 3D, but at these high frame rates, there's not really a meaningful benefit to getting that much FPS. And here we have it running at triple 4K, where we're still getting a pretty good lead for the triple screens over the 5800X 3D. So now we're running a set of Corsa in VR, getting a 10 frame boost over the 7950X in the 1% lows, which of course is very important for having a smooth experience in VR. Now, realistically, both of these are, are doing an amazing job, and whether or not you'd actually notice that while playing is probably pretty minimal, but let's see if this trend continues. And now we're moving on to a set of course of Competizione, uh, triple 1440p. This is in a hot lap setting, so no AI cars, and we're using epic settings with DLSS quality. And here we have pretty similar performance, but once again, on triple screens, the 7950X is beating the 5800X 3D by a pretty small margin. And here is where I started to suspect something funny going on with Windows 11 and the 7950X, because once we put it in a race situation with AI cars for ACC, the performance absolutely tanked. And it's actually pretty close to the 4K performance that we'll see in a little bit. But the 5800X 3D is absolutely crushing in this scenario. And I wonder if the 7950X, if it was also on Windows 10, if it would have a better result. But this is the only test that I had these results. Um, and I tried it a couple times and still had the same results. But that goes to show you there's always some early adopter issues when new components come out. Now moving on to ACC at triple 4K in a hot lap setting, the 7950X once again beats the 5800X 3D by a small margin. But in the race scenario at triple 4K, they have pretty much exact same performance. And then moving on to VR and ACC, I took off DLSS and switched to TAA anti-aliasing. And once again, that's just because DLSS doesn't very, it always looks blurry in VR and more traditional anti-aliasing seems to always look better for whatever reason. But the 5800X 3D in VR is really crushing the 7950X here in the hot lap scenario. And looking at the 68.8 1% lows of the 7950X is most likely because it's hitting the 72 hertz asynchronous reprojection that Steam is forcing on my Valve Index and lowering that 1% low average. Then going to the Ray scenario, the 5800X 3D is still beating the 7950X, albeit by a smaller margin, but still doing a better job. Now onto iRacing, we're running at triple 4K and we're using the max quality preset. And this is in a hot lap scenario. And here the 7950X does 
Once again, a very good job in the triple screens uh, over the 5800X 3D, getting in about 18 FPS more and uh, much better 1% lows as well. But once we throw it into a race scenario, the 5800X 3D is pretty much matching the 7950X for the same exact performance, although doing a little bit better in the 1% lows. One thing I also wanna mention is because these are AI races and it's not a predetermined benchmark, things can vary a little bit. So always keep that in mind. And then we have iRacing in VR doing a hot lap and getting almost identical performance with just slightly better 1% lows again in VR on the 5800X 3D. But in the race scenario, the 5800X 3D once again does a little bit better than the 7950X in VR. On to Automobile Ballista 2 with 4K triples with 20 cars in the AI race, the 7950X in the triple scenario once again is beating the 5800X 3D. So we're starting to notice a trend here. On average, the 7950X seems to be doing better in triples. And then when we move to VR, the 5800X 3D seems to be doing a little bit better in the 1% lows or even the general frame rate. And now we have F1 2022 with 4K max graphics, including ray tracing and using DLSS quality. And this is only using a single screen, not triple screens, so a single 4K. And the 5800X 3D is doing a little bit better than the 7950X on the single screens, which if you look at other benchmarks, the 5800X 3D does do very well in sim racing single screen um, applications over the 7950X, I think on general as well. But in F1 2022 in VR, once again, we're no longer using DLSS. We're using TAA with fidelity FX sharpening because that is the best looking scenario for VR in this case but they pretty much have almost identical VR performance here. And then the last game we're testing is Dirt Rally 2.0, and this is again 4K single screen, not triple screens, using uh, max graphics, and the 7950X is taking the lead in this one, but with a little bit worse 1% lows. This was the interesting one, and I would say the outlier is where the 7950X in VR on Dirt Rally 2 was doing much better than the 5800X 3D. It seemed like in general the 5800X 3D didn't really like this game in VR because it was hitting that 72 uh, FPS uh, asynchronous reprojection quite a bit and was overall not a very, even though the average frame rate was 142, it was kind of a not great experience compared to the 7950X. Now, as you just saw, both of the CPUs do a phenomenal job and they are great options. But what is the real differentiator from them? And that is gonna be the price. So the 7950X comes out around $700 and the 5800X 3D I've seen as low as $330 on sale. The 5800X 3D is using the AM4 platform while the 7950X is using the AM5 platform. So for the people that are already on the AM4 platform with an older Ryzen CPU, the 5800X 3D is just a drop-in upgrade and all you need is a BIOS update. You don't really have to change anything else about your PC. Whereas the 7950X is a whole new platform, so that means DDR5 RAM, which is much more expensive than DDR4, uh, a brand new motherboard, which the X670 motherboards and even B660 motherboards are still pretty expensive compared to AM4 motherboards. So your overall cost is gonna be much greater on going to the new platform. So my recommendation would be if you're already on the AM4 platform, I think the 5800X 3D is a no brainer if you need that extra performance. If your PC is doing what you need it to do, then by all means, stick with what you got. But if you want some more CPU performance or you don't have, wanna to have to worry about it for a couple of years and you know uh, the CPU will carry you on for, for a good amount of time, I really do think the 5800X 3D is the best bang for your buck. Even if you're starting from scratch, the 5800X 3D is still a great option because it's much cheaper. The motherboards and the RAM is gonna be much, much cheaper and it'll still last you for a long time. So overall, it's gonna be much more bang for the buck than going to the AM5 platform. Now the benefit of going to the AM5 platform with the 7000 series CPU is the future upgradability. The AM4 platform is at the end of the road. There will be no more chips that fit into that platform, so the 5800X 3D is the last one, and that's as good as it's gonna get. With the AM5 platform, whenever the next generation, and maybe for a couple generations, you can still upgrade the CPU without having to change your system around, similar to the people that would be upgrading to the 5000 series chips. 
So if you're a person that likes to upgrade frequently to the latest and greatest, uh, that additional cost of the AM5 might be worth it for you. Now, in terms of raw performance, currently the 5800X3D seems to definitely be the way for people going VR. It did do a little bit better than the 7950X in VR, and it had very good uh, minimum frame rates or 1% lows, which is definitely beneficial to VR. So for those people specifically, I would also recommend the 5800X3D. Now, on the other side with the 7950X, for the people running triple screens, you did get a little bit more performance with it other than the weird issues that were most likely caused by Windows 11, which I might actually be end up downgrading to Windows 10 to hopefully solve those issues for myself. And then another thing I would like to add is if you look at other benchmarks, the gaming performance between the range of 7000 series chips from the 7600 to the 7950X and everything in between, uh, the performance for gaming is pretty similar. So if you're just sim racing, I don't, I would not recommend the 7950X because you're not really going to put all those extra cores to use. For me, in content creation, it was worth it. But for just gaming, I would definitely recommend going with one of the cheaper 7000 series CPUs. Another benefit of the 7000 series is that they have an iGPU. So that means you can plug another HDMI port into your motherboard. And while that's not useful for a gaming screen because the iGPU is not powerful enough, it is useful for secondary screens or external dash displays. So for sim racers, that could be very beneficial if that matters to you. Another thing that I would like to note is, of course, Intel is an option. I highly recommend checking out Dan Suzuki's videos if you're looking for some more CPU benchmarks uh, that are directed towards sim racing. I know sim racing benchmarks can be a little bit tough to find sometimes versus the vast majority of general gaming benchmarks. And unfortunately, I don't have the resources to have a bunch of different computers and CPUs, at least not yet. Maybe one day in the future we'll be able to. So I just wanted to throw out there that Intel is still another great option and you should always uh, weigh out all your options. Uh, one thing I just like about AMD is that they typically tend to be more future forward compatible than Intel does. Well, I think that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or comments, then go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video or it helped you out, then I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up on the video and subscribe if you'd like to see some more sim racing and tech content in the future. And as always, take it easy and have a good one. Peace.